first, I, I've read your testimony, but I want to be like very clear. Is is it your position that um, that currently hydrogen could be regulated under existing authority under the ICA? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, would that apply? Because I know at there's a statute or there's a definitional issue with respect to the fact that most hydrogen is currently derived from fossil fuel sources. Would it apply in your view to hydrogen from electrolysis as well, or would it need to be blended for that, um, you know, for that definition to still hold true? Senator, thank you for the question. Let, let me back up. Sure. If you're talking about blending hydrogen. Um, into natural gas, then that would be covered by the Natural Gas right. Act. If you're talking about hydrogen uh, as its own source or transportation of, you go back to the 1906, they weren't thinking about uh, renewable energies back then. So all the legislative history and so forth is sort of you know, geared right. towards fossils. Um, and clearly, if it's generated from fossil fuels, it's, you know, and, and it generates energy, I think the FERC can regulated under the ICA. On the other hand, FERC has, but not the courts yet, decided that they can regulate things that are not just uh, from fossil fuels, but are energy producing and that can compete with other energy uh, sources and that are transported on pipelines. But um, there is some, you know, a, maybe a little bit of uncertainty because even FERC has changed its mind on whether it's supposed to regulate ammonia or not. So I can say, yes, I believe it is, but there's not a lot of hard so, precedent. That's so we why could use some, some clarity that the ICA would be an appropriate way to, to regulate transport of hydrogen, especially if that hydrogen is, is purely generated from electrolysis. Yes, yes, Senator, I believe that is the case because as you probably know, someone like me, we litigate a lot over what's covered right. and what's not sure. covered and what's jurisdictional and what's not. So a little more clarity would be, you know, I think perfect. And talk to me some more about sort of common access to pipelines, what you brought up with respect to new sources and how we make sure that uh, new uses and new sources have access to our transportation infrastructure. Yes, Senator. Um, the Natural Gas Act is more or less a contract carriage kind of provision or act. Um, on the other hand, the ICA is a common carrier act. And the way FERC has implemented it over the years is that all new shippers and all shippers should have access to that pipeline. And they require people to keep a certain amount of new capacity, generally 2%, available for new shippers. So I think, you know, and that's, it, it works fairly well. It maybe could be better. Some people say we should get more, but at the same time, at least there's a fair chance for somebody to get on that pipeline, and that's regulated by the commission, FERC. For Mr. Marsh or any of you who have expertise in this, um, what are the prospects for downstream deep blending? So using existing pipelines for blended methane and hydrogen, and then pulling just the hydrogen out for end use applications later? So Senator, uh we do spend a lot of time on that issue. And it is the opinion of our uh, technical office that the technology really does exist today. So that's not the challenge. It's how to do it cost effectively. I was going to ask if so it's that's really, economical. Uh, and I really don't have an answer to the cost effectiveness. But, uh, you know, it's actually a pretty simple schematic. But how to implement it, uh, you know, needs to be done and needs to be demonstrated at scale. Okay. I think it'd be perfect, actually, for the electrolyzer bill, which was part of the hydrogen hub activity to demonstrate that type of technology. Um, Mr. Zamorin, talk to me a little bit more about the specifics of how you believe our existing infrastructure could be repurposed. What are some of the technologies and processes that you would use to be able to hold uh, hydrogen in our existing pipeline infrastructure? And how do we avoid the, the sort of incredible leak issue that we've uncovered in recent years with respect to pure methane 
uh, in existing infrastructure? How do we make sure we don't make those same mistakes the next time? Yeah, thank Especially you. Especially given the size of the molecule. Absolutely. And we are committed to decarbonizing and lowering the methane emissions of the existing natural gas infrastructure. And we are already working on hydrogen projects to demonstrate this ability. In New Jersey, we're going to produce hydrogen driven by solar power. We're going to put that into our Transco pipeline system and deliver that to consumers in New Jersey. We also are developing a project in Wyoming where we'd like to use wind power and natural gas production, show how we can complement those technologies and move hydrogen blended in our existing pipeline and serve the Pacific Northwest. We have pipelines in Wyoming that deliver to Washington, Oregon, and onto the doorstep of California. So I, I believe we can demonstrate that it can be done. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Um, and now we have Senator Langford. Mr. Chairman, thanks. Thanks for this hearing. Uh, thanks to the witnesses uh, for being here as well. Uh, I, I 